if if you sensitive people, if you sensitive, please <laughs> get up and leave uh, the the room, the audience. You know, I understand, but there will be no refunds. I've been waiting, no refunds. All my two favorite shows will come back. One of them came back. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Um, shit, shit, goddamn. That's some damn enchiladas. Migo! Too spicy, too spicy. I, 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 I think I'll have another one, yeah. <laughs> that lady, lady, stop stop laughing. You're going to spit. Do not spit your food out. Stop. <laughs> well, my two favorite shows are The Ozarks and Narcos. Now, Ozarks hasn't come back out yet, but Narco has. Narcos has, and I love it. I love it, yeah. I think Bad Bunny was in it. Man, it was awesome. A lot of action, a lot of twists and turns in this last season. But I didn't know about it until my homegirl told me about it. She called me. And she's a big, uh, she's like a conspiracy theorist. She believes in numbers and she believes every situation has a meaning, a deeper meaning. She's one of those people. But uh, she called me and she said, did you see the sister in Narcos? I don't think that's a, a sister and a, a sister, a black woman in Narcos. I said, no. She said, yeah. She was the last one standing. Yep, uh-huh, the last one standing. The realest bitch. And I'm thinking like, okay, what what happened to Narcos? Did, did Griselda Blanco have a fucking black sister or some shit? What's going on? So she goes on to tell me, I'm moving to Mexico. What? what? You moving to Mexico? Yeah, I'm moving to Mexico. Because Mexican men knew how to treat black women right. So I told her, I said, hold on, Miss Mulatto. You got like 1% of black in you, bitch. Don't nobody want no mulatto, bitch, except them niggas in the hood. Because they can't get a real white woman, so they settle for a mixed mulatto motherfucker. Don't take your ass down to Mexico to chop your motherfucking head out, trying to get down there and get them gold dig up on their motherfucking money. Your ass gonna come up missing in the desert, yeah. Head, legs, fingers, nose, eyes, ears, all gone. And yeah, you know motherfuckers ain't searching for no black woman. Come on now. She hit me with the, ain't nobody going down there to gold dig. I got my own money. I, I, I got my own money. I said, you just said you like how the Mexican drug that left all that money. Money was your main conversation. You going to Mexico for a Mexican man. Come on now. I'm trying to keep your ass safe, sister. Queen. So then my mulatto friend turns full white girl on me. Full white girl. She says, take that back. Someone's going to look for me. Someone's going to look for me. Don't say that. Take that back. I said, uh-uh. No, no, no. No one is looking for a black woman. If you come up missing, you're just going to be missing. That's usually how it goes. I'm sorry. Now, her mother got it halfway right, right? See, my friend's first name is Christian. Okay, Christian. Okay. We'll, we'll let her in for the interview, right? But then the last name is where her mama and her daddy fucked up. Her last name is Brown. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No one is going to search for a woman by the last name of Brown. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't even know any white people with the last name Brown. It seems as though all black people got the last name Brown. James Brown, Chris Brown. I mean, now nah, think about it. There's Charlie Brown, but that's a cartoon. They had to make that shit up. It's so unbelievable. But I told her, you be careful moving to Mexico, Miss Brown, Miss Mulatto, because she's confused. Some days she wants to be black, some days she wants to be white, and I get it, I get it. Some days I want to be poor, some days I want to be rich. Well, when I want to be poor, when I'm trying to get a link card or some shit, you know, some government benefits, Section 8, that's when I want to be poor. But other days I want to be rich as hell, so I flip-flop just like her. And you know, I love my friend. I love my friend. She's very beautiful. But I would never forget in high school, in high school, uh, she made the pom pom team. She was a cheerleader. She made she was a cheerleader. 
And I remember her coming to me, kind of distraught, kind of crying a little bit. And she asked me the strangest question. I was like, you know, I I didn't really want to answer, but she said, if you, if, if you didn't know me and you saw me on the street, what, what color, what color would you think I, I is? Or what race would you think I am? Oh, shit. Oh, God. She's going through a midlife crisis. Uh, I, I, I remember back then it was hard for me to ask. I said, I would just think that you were a good person. No, what color? If you saw me and you had to choose like a color I was, what color? Uh, a nigga? Yeah, I would think that you're a nigga. You look more niggerish than white, baby. <laughs> I had to calm her down. I had to calm her down and say, listen, we're going to get you some of your Adderall. Hold on. Let me go get some of your Adderall. Well, what's the code on your locker again? <laughs> oh, shit. Then we ran into our white homeboy that's in the hallway. They had no idea what was coming. He didn't even know the dynamic of the question. He just answered it honestly, as, as you should, right? <laughs> so she said, Brad, Brad. If you, if you saw me on the street, if you be honest, Brad, if you saw me on the street, what race, what color would you think that I am? What race or color would you think that I am? Now, she got the good hair. I give her that. So, Brad, he was just like, uh, Chris, I would say that you're a lovely African goddess, black queen. You're African queen. You're a queen. Chris, you know you're a queen. Oh, she did not want to hear that shit. She did not. <laughs> you don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> uh, but, but on a serious note, on a serious note, I feel bad for the mixed girls, the mulattoes, you know, especially the light, bright ones, uh, because they always get picked on. They've been getting picked on since they was little. They've been getting ostracized. By both cultures, the black culture and the white culture, you know, that mixed thing really begin they feelings all mixed up. And it's interesting, um, because it's usually a particular set of girls that wanna always fuck up the mulatto mixed chick that's always hating on that mixed chick. They always wanna beat up and fight the mulatto chick, the mixed girl. Why? And it's usually, it's usually, I'm sorry. That one bald head ass girl that sucks her thumb and got the smallest ponytail in the world. Oh, she usually got that itty bitty, bitty bitty piece of hair sticking out in that little, little ponytail. And quite frankly, she's jealous. She's jealous of that mulatto girl with the long hair, the hazel eyes, and the beautiful bright skin. Now, I've dated some mulattoes, you know. I went to some family reunions with some mulattoes. <laughs> and they usually stand out. They usually stand out. They are the elephant in the room. And people usually say shit like this. Yeah, that's that's Taekwon's. Yeah, that's Taekwon's baby. That's Leroy's baby. It's never. It's Taekwon's daughter. That's his baby girl. It's Yeah, that's, that's Jerome's uh Sad peace, baby. Yeah, you up that chick in the hospital? You fucking with? Yeah, that's his baby right there. I got him a mulatto. Yeah, I got his ass. Mm. Look, yep. Mm -hmm. You think she gonna like your spaghetti? So protect all the mulatto, the mixed people, mixed kids at all costs. The black and whites, the black and Asian, the black and Latino men and women, cause they be going through some things. I'm telling y'all. They be going through things. Now me, I like to lie on my job applications. Yes, I like to lie on my job application and say that I'm Asian. Yes, I am Asian. And I have an Asian sounding last name. That's what makes everything so messed up, right? So I applied for this job at this tech company. I got the Google certificate. You know, they say, hey, you're going to be in the front race, a front runner when you get this Google certificate. So I applied to this company to do tech work and I checked hey I'm Asian on the box uh, Korean guy comes to the door on the day of the interview uh, uh. Mr. Sung 
Hey, it's me. Uh, you, you not uh, Korean. You not Korean? Yes, I am. I'm I'm Korean. No, you not. No, you not. You lie on your application. Why? Uh, I'm Korean. I am an Asiatic black man. I am an Asiatic black man. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, black people been here since the beginning of time, and we've been everywhere. You know that guy that was in Snake Eyes, the G.I. Joe Snake Eyes movie, that was teaching, he was blind, he was teaching the Asians karate up in the mountains? That's my granddaddy. Yeah. Uh, yep, so I'm Asian. Now, I, I love Asian people because they are straight shooters, straight talkers. They don't bullshit. They don't sugarcoat things. So the Asian boss stood, they say, you leave this office now. You lie, you lie, you lie. You not Asian. You not Korean. Sir, I am Korean. My last name is Sung. I'm an Asiatic black man. You get out of this office now. We already meet our quota. We already meet our quota. Black janitor and black lunch lady. You know, no computer fix for you. Leave now. And I, I, I was startled because I was like, whoa, damn. It's all about quotas and numbers and... Oh, oh. And then I saw this beautiful Asian woman coming close to me. And she had like a security off, outfit on. She didn't, she didn't look intimidating, but she was scaring me because she was really silent. Just giving me that look. She said, sir, we're going to have to ask you to leave now. We're going to have to ask you to leave. So she's walking me out the door, and I'm just like, you know what? I really apologize. That's not like me. So I stopped at the door before I left. She said, it's okay. It's okay. I said, listen, since I didn't get a happy ending, I didn't get a massage or anything, can I at least get a fortune cookie? She said, get your ass out of here. She back, kicked my ass onto the street. Ah! Yeah, man, I lost all my resumes. My manila fold popped open. All my resumes flew on the streets of Chicago, off into the wind, frrr, up into the air. Yeah, I'm suing my ass. They owe me some resumes. I just got them resumes printed at Office Max. I came back. The guy said, hey, you back again already? Yeah, the Asian bitch kicked my ass and made me lose all my resumes. Uh-huh. <laughs>